Okay, so a bit of background about this workshop. Basically, the presenters are Mr. Ting Fei and Mr. Julian Lim. They are both professionals uh, with the qualifications and also working experience in both sports science and sports coaching. So today's presentation is really about sharing the various mobile applications that sports coaches can use when they are doing their coaching. So without further ado, we will hand over to Mr. Uh, Ting Fei and Julian to start the presentation. All right, All right. good afternoon everyone. All right. Can you see my screen and hear me well now? All right. Maybe if you do, just have a thumbs up. If it, all right, can you see my screen? Yes. Mm, all right, all right. So thanks to everyone right, for you know, taking your time on this lovely like, uh, afternoon to join myself in Ife, right, to go through this um, you know, presentation on mobile applications for measuring physical performance in sports. Right? So our aim right, is really to empower the coach to really to use today's information that we're going to share for your own coaching and apply for your own sport and learning. Right? Right? We really want right, to keep this really very interactive as well as to help you translate, right, the, uh, the sports science jargon, right, that can be sometimes quite complex, to really simplify it and make it specific for your sports. Mm. All right, so today's agenda, we're going to go through an introduction about, like, technology and its latest utility in sports. And then we cover, right, uh, into how we can actually utilize mobile applications, right, um, into the assessment. And we're going to highlight, right, these four measurements, right, so muscular power, maximum strength, uh, movement analysis, load monitoring, and then we'll end off with a quick summary, right, and some takeaway applications. All right, so if everyone, right, you can put your answer within the chat room, right, you just want to know, right, from the 60 participants that we have over here this afternoon, right, what are the sports that you coach, right? Maybe you can just quickly type down in the, into the chat room, right, we want to know, like, what sports you coach, right? So for instance, my background is actually in track and field, right? So I have like the IAF level one track and field certification, right? And I do coach like some um, amateur athletes. And I believe Ife, right? Mm. Um, yeah, you can me say your AFC? Okay, so for me, hi everyone, uh, I'm Ife. And I've been uh, coaching professionally since I think 2007 in football specifically. So in football, we have uh, something we call football fitness coach. And that is a profession that requires you to have a sports science degree and a coaching cert. Mm -hmm. Why is that so? Mm, so that you are able to tailor strength and conditioning program mm -hmm. that is relevant to the sports of football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I also coach other sports such as uh, volleyball, but particularly in strength and conditioning, uh, tennis, uh, uh, running. And uh, for some of those uh, that you have been typing in the chat group, right, like what Julian say, it's quite important so that we want to be able to tailor today's content uh, on the spot as much as possible, give you some relevant examples on how this mobile application uh, can help you in making value to your coaching practice. Of course, we are not able to uh, answer everyone's questions, but fear not, I think you can forward those questions to Chan Leong and if you are able to do so, uh, you can they will send it to us, or if not, our contacts will be at the end of this presentation. Feel free to uh, chat us up and we will be able to share more with you. All right, so great. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, my, my background is in track and field, right? And like, um, I was a strength conditioning coach um, um, for many years, actually doing high performance coaching for basketball, uh, um, athletics, as well as uh, badminton. Right? So I can see how I can relate to many of you guys. Right, you can, a lot of you are swimming coaches, right? So welcome, mm -hmm. right? And also can yes. see some uh, field-based sports like football, hockey, mm -hmm. right, basketball. Yeah, so definitely like, all these sports and events, right, require a lot of strength power, which we dive mm -hmm. in uh, later mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, so just a, a little quick introduction, right? So both physiological and anthropometric measurements are essential in sports and exercise science because they help to actually monitor and adjust workloads and training analyze fatigue, right? uh, detect talents, identify weaknesses, as well as prevent injuries. Right? And all the gold standard tests are actually lab-based assessments, such as the metabolic card, 3D motion capture systems, and the force plates they can see on the picture of the right over here, 
right? When I'm doing a, uh, assessments for the Singapore Slingers, right? Back in the days, all right. So, you know, all these tests, right, right, are really highly controlled, uh, held in highly controlled environments. And so, the negative part is the actually accessibility to these tests, right? Mm. Most of these equipments, right, are actually right only available right in the university setting or the local sports institute or the hospital setting, right? So maybe you know. Um, the everyday coaches unable to bring in their athletes to come and have a really uh, accurate and precise testing, mm -hmm. right? But field tests these days, right, are really more often utilized, mainly because of what we call the ecological validity, right? If you test on the field, on the basketball court, in the soccer arena, right, that's where actually you can translate what you test to actually performance and you can actually relate it to whether your athlete is improving, stagnant, or getting better, yeah. All right, all right. So one way, right, that, that you know, coaches, right, can actually utilize field tests easily is that with the use of mobile applications, mm -hmm. right? So the ACSM or the American uh, College of Sports Medicine has actually said that mobile applications are among the top fitness trends for 2019. And right? this is actually due to the actually technological, technological advancements in our mobile devices that we have today. Right, all your latest iPhones, all your little Android systems, all have the accelerometers and gyroscopes in them. Mm. Right, the videos also have high frame rates and high screen resolutions. Right, Julian, can I uh, interject for a while? Yeah. So, uh, people, so what Julian meant, right? The, those gyroscope, those accelerometer, those high speed camera that is present almost in every phone, uh, that is out there in the market. What it does, right? Like accelerometer, it can measures. Uh, change in speed, gyroscope, you can measure uh, change in position. So all these little hardware inside, just at your palm, right? It's not accessible to everybody. So that is very good, which means that most application now, if you get the right scientists and you get the right uh, software developer, you can actually create something uh, that you can bring out field and very accurate. So that's what uh, Julian is trying to say. Okay. Mm. Mm. Right. Yeah, thanks. Right. Mm. So the, the positive part is, you know, cheap. Right, easily mm. uh, to be purchased on the App Store, portable, right, and also I really have a very user friendly interface, right, which does not require great expertise in back end data processing, right. The negative part, right, is with the plethora of like uh, you know the apps on the App Store. You can see there's actually many uh, apps that's available. Like for instance, if I give you an example of a heart rate, right, there's actually you know hundreds of apps you know that you can say they can accurately detect heart rates, right. But only actually a few apps have shown that they are really valid and reliable, right? So, you know, the measurements, you can and be ensured, right? That what you, are you measuring are telling you the real results. Mm. Okay, right? So to illustrate, right? Okay, the cost of outfitting, right? All the equipments in local sports institute, right? It's one high, uh, one four splits. They come up all the way to 30,000 US dollars, right? Versus mm. that of a mobile uh, application. They actually measure similar uh, results or measurements, right? Okay, comes out only to maybe fifteen dollars uh, USD, right? So you can mm -hmm. see the community, right? the 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 savings you can have from, from just using a mobile app. All right, so you know definitely on this call, right? Like um, we really have like definitely tech savvy coaches in the house, right? So I just want to ask among the floor, you can type in your answers in the chat room. What are mobile applications that you currently use or have installed in your app, uh, in your phone? How about Ife? What's your go-to app that you have uh, on your phone? Actually, for me, right, the vertical jump uh, mobile app is the most applicable because for it's cheap, first of all, and it's easy to use. And I think later on, Julian will also introduce uh, this uh, quite easy to use app for all of you to understand a bit more. And uh, basically today's uh, really takeaway for everyone is to understand that there are tons of apps outside, but what is the most uh, applicable based on what Julian and I we have used already. Yeah, and uh, maybe you can try that out and see, uh, does it add value to your coaching practice, uh, help you to measure your athlete's performance? Because measuring athlete's performance is one way to keep athletes motivated also. You have uh, really a good objective feedback. Yeah, so some of you, uh, Gam, Garmin, right? Yeah, even simple application like heart rate monitor, those are performance measurements app. Mm. 
So another, oh, okay, good. There's this uh, Ubersense, previously known as Ubersense, uh, hard technique. Great. Great, man. Yeah, so thanks for mm. sharing, everyone. All right, so, yep. yeah. If there's one app you have to have in your phone now, it's the Trace Together app, all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, all right, so, okay. The apps for analyzing physical performance, right? So we're going to cover these four uh, parameters, right? I'll be covering the first two, right? Uh, muscular power and maximum strength. And Ife will be sharing with us more on today on the movement analysis and load monitoring. Okay, so muscular power is an essential ability in all sports. And the vertical jump, right? Okay, it's the main one that's being used for athletes, right? Especially in strength power sports. So vertical jump, right? Helps to assess the rate of force development, analyze neuromuscular fatigue, as well, right, okay, to actually identify force asymmetry uh, with the aim of injury prevention, right? So the gold standard you can see over here is utilizing a force plate, right, where previously I was testing the power abilities of the national badminton team, right? So this test on the right over here, you can see it's actually testing reactiveness of the force plate. You step off a box, touch the floor, and jump as high as possible, right? Then the, the pictures over here on the bottom over here indicate, right, uh, we're doing a plyometric push-up, all right, so it's an indication of power for the upper body. Okay. All right, so if we go standard testing with a force plate, right, how they actually assess it is the takeoff velocity. Right? You actually need a force plate to, in, to really analyze how fast or how fast the athlete is actually pushing themselves off the device. Okay. All right, so I mentioned right, they actually can use this uh, application called the My Jump Tool to really detect the same results that you're trying to achieve, right, from measuring the vertical jump, right? So for instance, a vertical jump or scientifically it's called a counter movement jump. With this app, you can identify, right, the height, okay, athlete jumps, the time you take in the air, velocity, force, and power indices, right? Okay, okay, with this app also, you're able to measure, right, the drop jump test that I did earlier with the badminton athletes, okay, a test of low body reactiveness, Right, you can even get results of contact time, vertical stiffness, as well as a relative strength index. Right, so if you can see from this video, how it's being used, right, is the it's actually using the videos to identify the flight time of the jump. Right, so through a slow motion recording feature of your smartphone, right, you can actually manually okay, detect when is the takeoff and landing phases of the jump, and it gives you the overall uh, flight time being measured. Right, so the flight time of the jump is being used to calculate the eventual jump height power of the athlete, right? So this is a really very popular app that you can take note of. And furthermore, it's confirmed widely in literature over the recent years to show really very good correlation to that of a force plate. Right? You can see okay, the, the numbers over here. Okay, right, so moving on to maximum strength, right? So maximum strength is a testing, right? That's often used right, to prescribe uh, uh, training programs, right? And the 1RM is uh, used very, very regularly, right? So if you're not familiar with what the one repetition max is, actually it's the heaviest weight you can lift for one repetition or one time, right? Most commonly for low body assessments, you're going to be using the back squat, right? But the 1RM, right? Okay, it really depends on the athlete's lifting experience. Okay, you can see over here, okay, the track and field athletes okay, doing the back squat exercise, right? Right. If you're not an experienced athlete, right, unfortunately, you know, these things can be happening on the video on the right, okay, which not only give you inaccurate results, but may right, injure the athlete in the process. Right. Okay. So that's a traditional way of measuring um, okay, or assessing the 1RM. Okay. But lately, right, the measurement of the speed of the barbell right, is actually deemed the most accurate method of determining one's uh, one repetition max. Right. This is actually due to the strong relationship between the load and velocity, right? So you can see the graph over here as the load or the percentage of one RM increases, right? You can see the speed of the movement actually drops, right? And there's a very nice uh, correlation between the two indices indicating a straight line, right? So that means the heavier the, the movement or the heavier the load that you're trying to move, right? The lower the speed is, right? So it's really basic physics, right? Okay, and so, there's this come this new paradigm in strength and conditioning where we call velocity based training, right? So it's based on the systematic measurements of the barbell velocity to adjust and prescribe training intensities. So you can see on the 
table over below over here, you can see actually each percentage of one RM have a specific velocity range. When you're listing something really very heavy, right? You can see the speed actually goes down to less than 0 0.5 meters per second. And you're training something at really very fast speed, it actually goes to get more than 1.3 meters per second. Right? So the gold standard right, is actually using what we call a high frequency linear transducer. Right? So when I was testing the National Gymnasts athletes beforehand, you can see they're actually using a device called Gym Aware. And what is okay, invisible over here, right? Okay, actually that's like what you call a teeter or like it's almost like a fishing line right, attached to the rod on the athlete's back, right? So how fast the athlete jumps, right? will also eventually pull the string as fast as possible and will give you the speed of the movement, right? Okay, so how we can actually use applications to replicate this kind of testing, right? There's another app called MyLift that actually helps you to replicate and do estimations of these six different exercises. Right, so it's the same principle as that of the my jump tool, using okay, the camera to actually detect okay, the beginning and the end of the movement and give you estimations of the one or m. And this is actually shown right in the most recent paper just published June this year. Right, they actually shown a very good reliability and validity between the two devices. Right, you can see the expensive gym two thousand pounds versus the my lift, okay, only ten pounds, being very valid to measure. Okay, the back squat exercise. All right, okay. So even with the latest phones that, that we have, right? The cool function that is because of the motion capture feature of our devices, right? We're able actually to integrate okay, the latest technology of AR, augmented reality, as well as AI, artificial intelligence, right? Into the softwares, right? So for instance, the MyLeaf app, right? It's able to trace the barbell trajectory, right? It's really something really very fanciful, right? So the picture or the video on the left of here is like my fruiter attempt to do a power exercise, right? such as a Olympic. This is called a, a snatch exercise, right? Or Olympic lift, right? So usually, right? Okay, you want to obtain a really nice smooth S curve when you're doing kind of like modified Olympic lifts to train power, right? So this, you know. Um, app right it was able to trace the trajectory and even give you how far or how thick the S if S if right horizontal displacements, vertical displacements, and even the velocity at different points. Right, you want to actually accelerate the movement as quickly as possible when you reach the top, so to actually to train power for the athlete. Okay, even the MyLeaf app, right? Some functions is able to identify how deep you squat in exercise. Right, so you know a lot of athletes sometimes when you bring them to the gym, right? You ask them to do a half squat, they'll be like, oh, oh I'm like really you not know, not putting a lot of effort, right? Then as you as a coach, right, or you as a trainer, sometimes you'll be you know placing a bench below them, asking them to, to squat down, right? So that's fine, but then it may be dangerous, especially if they let's say they're lifting with really very really heavy weights, right? So how to make it a lot safer, utilizing technology, right? The AI right system or AI system right within the, the app right is able to actually detect okay your hip height okay then even the knee height right so once the knees or once the hips okay pass that of the knees right the app will actually indicate a sound indicating a correct squat depth right then automatically tells the athlete as well as the coach right to train really very specifically right so there's many utility of this even for testing. All right, so this may resonate well with the basketball coaches. Maybe you have downloaded this app to, to use. All right, so you know, doing a circuit breaker, right? I'm finding ways to motivate myself to, to exercise, right? Then I, I found I found this app, right? They really utilize AR really very really well. All right, so you can place okay, objects okay, within your screen, right? To have like almost like arcade style kind of training, right? And so you know, anybody or any coach. Right, that you have athletes in you know strength power field based sports that require agility change of direction, these kind of applications right, makes the training more fun, right? As well as like uh, you know you can easily integrate some tests during training. Okay, and the last one I'm going to share with you right is something that was just released in June or so, right? Okay, so I, I felt that this app. Right. I I'm not I'm not part of the team, right? But I wish I was, right? Because it you know, really as it's a game changer, I feel in how they're actually able to promote okay and even intensify someone to really train remotely. 
right? Okay, so the next video I'm going to show you is how the device works. It's really like a virtual personal trainer. Yeah, so you can see this uh, application, right? Okay, it's like available on okay, your laptop, your your iPad or tablets, or even your iPhone to really go and maximize to use um, okay, training on your own, right? It's like um, really the game changer that I feel like uh, they can really take remote training or coaching to the next level, right? Yeah. All right, okay, so I can pass the time on to Ife. Okay, he'll carry on like uh, sharing with us a little bit more Right, on uh, the next two apps. Hi everyone. Yep. Thanks for Julian's presentation in the first part of this uh, online workshop. So what Julian has introduced to your basically are uh, apps that have been validated or mobile apps that uses AR or an uh, AI to help you keep your athletes engaged remotely. Actually, that's why that's one of our purpose of having this workshop. Because of this circuit breaker, some of us might have some troubles because we can't be on site to engage everyone. And having these mobile applications, you can actually ask the athletes to do it remotely. So for example, like me, I will ask the athlete to send in a video of themselves. Uh, I, will, I will give them some specifications, like the my jump tool, the application that Julian has introduced to you in the beginning. I will ask the athletes to forward to me uh, a video setting in slow-mo so I can analyze their jump height uh, remotely. I don't even need to be there. So just think of uh, today's uh, session as helping you to engage your athletes uh, remotely. And the next question that I want to ask most of you would be, mm, give me a moment. Let me share my screen. Okay, next question, right? I want to ask some of you, and uh, how do you all analyze your movements and why do you want to analyze your movements for athletes? Maybe you can type some of your answers inside the comment. I want to see how you guys do it. Some of you have already uh, told us that you use uh, Ubersense or there are some other software that we might not be uh, known yet. So maybe you can share with us what have you uh, been doing? Just take a minute, you can share with us. Yeah, so for me, I coach youth athletes most of the time. And uh, for youth athletes, there are a few ways that we can analyze the movement. You also do not want to overanalyze. I will show you some examples of what uh, I do with e easy apps such as uh, Ubersense. Uh, to oh, great, to monitor their progress. Ah, I, is it Chen Hub? Nice, visual. Yes, that is a very good answer, visual feedback. Because for some athletes, athletes learn in multiple manners. So it can be uh, a verbal feedback, which means the coach gives a verbal feedback. There's also uh, visual feedback where they see themselves in action. And also they can, uh, you can manual feedback, which means you hold them 
you hold certain parts of their body to show them, for example, a basketball, right? If they are not lifting their elbows high enough, you try to use your, try to lift them up a bit more and put up. Oh, great. Put up examples of positive movements. What we, yeah, exactly. Fantastic. So now, right, with a lot of uh, app, like, okay, I can't pronounce this uh, hard technique, but I will usually call it UberSense. For UberSense, one of my greatest uh, difficulty in helping players understand kicking techniques would be how to create an open position. And uh, we can see, right, from uh, the first one, this is, was done in January, January 2019. And the next photo was after three months of coaching. That was in March 2019. That was three months later. And I, for sure, you, when you give a visual feedback, the athlete will be able to understand much better what they meant by an open position. Either I can demonstrate or they can see themselves in action. So for coaches, uh, sometimes you want to find correct movements online and there's a lot of uh, pictures, correct pictures you can find on scientific journals or even coaching websites that have been produced by qualified coaches to find uh, good posture. And what Julian has also shared with me uh, over the last few days, like we are trying to correct running forms for some athletes. There's apps also that you can shadow the correct running form and you superimpose it over your athletes. Yeah, these are simple applications that you can actually use, right? And give feedback to your athletes. Quite interesting. So you can see that this player, after three months, she has adopted a more open stance and that's because of the visual feedback given. And what is the most amazing thing is you can just use your phone, bring out field, just take a snapshot and immediately you have feedback ready. Yeah, you don't even need to. You can, because coaching time is so rare now, like some of you are school coaches. Um, if you are an elite coach, fine, we have protected time. But some of you are school coaches, we do not have enough time with the athletes and we need to do so much things. But if you have some time, bring your mobile phone immediately, you give that subjective feedback to your players and you can make a change quite quickly. Yeah. And the next one, Runmatics, is also created under the same scientists that produce uh, my jump too. So Runmatics sells about for, I think less than 15 Singapore dollars. And for this, previously, if you use a, a motion analyzer, which is uh, inside the science lab, and I would say like most of us wouldn't have access to it. Now, we can use a 2D profile of your players and you can actually generate good uh, feedback for your players, like how does they, how do they uh, go up against a proper running form? So this is one of the uh, running form done by my players. She's a football player. And uh, like we said, we want to try to correct a forward lean. And from this, we can actually show that she has a uh, this slight forward lean that needs to be corrected. And I think the end, the same thing I would like to say, this is all done over the mobile phone. You don't even need to get her to the lab. And for coaches, right, to be able to do it right at the training spot and spending about, I would say I spend about five minutes once you get the hang of it to do this. Whether you can have the solutions to improve certain parameters, that is another question. Uh, if you are interested to know more about how we can improve certain things, like we need to improve the forward lean of this player, yeah, you can just tell Coach SG and probably Julian and I, we can uh, arrange for a separate session where you can offer solutions to some of the things that identify uh, in the motion analysis. So run metrics, you can, and one of the comments that is in the Zoom group chat to prevent injury, run metrics has another function where they can actually show you uh, how what the risk of injury, right? Just by analyzing the runner's posture. So that's pretty good. Of course, there's a learning curve to it. I'll talk more about that later on. Okay, and, and for some of us, right, like maybe I can ask again, how do you all engage your athletes in this difficult period? Now, I think we can only have groups of five in our training. How about the rest of the uh, athletes? Do you all use uh, Zoom or do you use other teleconferencing applications? 
Uh, maybe you can share with us in the group chat. I would like to know. Because the next one, when we talk about mobile applications, uh, it's really about how we can uh, coach them anywhere. It's not and remotely. That's the most, yeah, oh, bad for swimming coach, right? No camera and video. Yeah, I, I do agree. It's uh, quite challenging for swimming coaches. Mm, maybe Julie and I, we can put our brains together and see what we can do to help swimming coaches. I think for swimming coaches, at this time, it's pretty difficult because the medium of practice is actually, you need to be water-based. And now, probably Julian, do you have, uh, do you have any yeah. suggestion for swimming coaches for mobile mm, apps? I mean, the first thing, the first thing is like, uh, you know, like just videoing the technique underwater, you can, you know, buy a waterproof case, right? Yeah, then just mm. like, just, just go under the surface to measure, right? And there's another swimming app actually that you can download. I mean, I, I can't remember the name of the app like beforehand. Right, but what it does is that uh, you know, like uh, you all you need to do is that like, um, it has like how Ife talk about you know there's certain shapes that you want to create on a pool, right? And they want you to mm. have, do some dry land drills and mimic the shapes, right? So you just overlay the picture right into the app, right? They they, they want to make sure the FB actually fit the same shapes that you're trying to do uh, on land with the water. But I'll, I'll you know drop us drop us a contact um, later on, then I'll get back to you what the, the application is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, we do understand your issues also as swimming coaches. Basically, the medium of practice is uh, water-based. Mm -hmm. So how do we engage? For me, right, uh, teleconferencing app has been a great help. Uh, I think recently, uh, I, because of my work with to engage the athletes remotely, we got a feature on CNA. And uh, for the... A moment. Okay, so one of the ways, right, we engage athletes remotely, you can use Zoom app. There are so many tools inside Zoom app, actually. And uh, for some of the athletes at this time, it's difficult to have technical coaching because they are in the confine of their home or because of the nature of the sport. So if you are just going to do general conditioning, like uh, core exercises, uh, upper limb uh, strengthening or lower limb strengthening, right, we can pretty much use pointers like this, or we can use the whiteboard to tell them, give them visual feedback on what they are doing, right or wrong. So this is what happened. Okay, this is in one of my sessions. When you use Zoom app, try to remember that there are tools, right, that you can use. It's not just Zoom app, I do, the athletes do. It's very different. Then it's no longer coaching. You can just do a pre-recorded video and show it to the athletes. When we are doing coaching remotely, there must be feedback given. That's the key point, okay? And of course, I understand group size uh, would be a concern, but as coaches, we can try to manage group size by either uh, having multiple sessions, which uh, we have no choice, or we can use the breakout room. So this is one of the start of the session where the athletes uh, are having issues with the posture, and that is, after the end of the session. So after showing him that video and after giving him some verbal cues, right, he's able to correct himself. So that's actually good coaching that we can actually execute on a teleconferencing platform. And we can do it remotely. You can do it over your phone. You can do it on your laptop. And how does all this, like when Julian say, use my jump tool to measure and uh, I use this, uh, I, I get the performance uh, parameters, like how far they can jump, how high they can jump, and uh, what are the programs that I need them to do remotely, right? There's something that is called cloud computing, which it's very good now. And, oops, in a moment. So for cloud computing, it can be a simple app like a Google Drive, okay? Where everybody can access. This is the coach. This is the team manager, and these are the athletes. So for me, when I use Google Drive, I have the training program on it. I have the wellness survey on it. I have the progress report on it. So this is how I can manage them right over this circuit breaker period. And even after the circuit breaker period, you can still implement this. So this is one of the programs that I give given them. This is right before the circuit breaker. And this is the progress report. So I actually put down the results and I shared with the players. 
And then this is the program that I gave them. And during the circuit breaker, I also tell them like what I need them to do over the period. Yeah, this is one of the ways, right, that we can use mobile applications to manage them remotely. We no longer need to be on site to give them that pen and paper, you know, to tell them, hey, please, uh, this is what you need to do. And then after that, if you break down into weeks, I can also manage their training load. So for example, I would tell the players uh, how, what is the rate of perceived exertion, how they feel after each training session. And they would type it out and I can see how they progress over the week. Okay, now comes the, I think one of the most important part because uh, for Julian and I, we share quite a fair bit really. And I think one, one of the most important thing is how we can apply all this uh, in our practice. I think this is the most important question that everybody, hey, I, I've heard so much from you guys. I know that's my jump to this, this uh, Google uh, Drive, you know, what, how can, what is the most important app for me? So personally, right, I feel just keep it something that is very specific to you, okay? What is one app that can help you to measure your player's performance? One, one thing. So could be my jump tool. Okay. And or if you think that you need to use uh, UberSense, tell them to take a video of themselves and send it to you. And then you can analyze it. And after that, you can give them feedback again remotely. Yeah. Or then after, again, how about progress report? Are you able to use uh, Google Drive or are you able to upload those results onto the drive, common drive to share among your athletes? And one of the good things about this app, if you have iPhone, I'm not sure about Android, but within iPhone, right? If you have a team of coaches, for example, if you are coaching swimming and you downloaded uh, UberSense, and if it's a paid app, you can actually share up to six of your coaches. So it, makes the cost even more economical. Yeah. So one team of coaches can actually have, you can actually, one app you can actually share among six coaches. That's pretty good. And in summary, what we want to introduce to you today is, uh, because before the start of the session, actually one of the coaches did ask us, like how do we get to know all these apps? How, how do we find out about all this? I think it's because Julian and I, we, we find that we can't get those expensive uh, laboratory equipment out into the field. And we really want to find something that's more portable, something that's more cheaper. And understanding how powerful our mobile phones are nowadays with AR, with the processors inside. There's bound to be uh, scientists and uh, programmers, right? They can create similar equipment. They can carry out laboratory testing. And that's how we find out about all these apps and can save you cost that's the most important and really give you a uh, good feedback for your athletes. And lastly, in this period, it's very important to motivate them. Like for example, my volleyball players, we still need to know how high they are jumping in this period, whether they have regress or we want to know their baseline. So we can give them a program, right? Where they can do on their own at home or even in schools in uh, manageable small groups. And then after one month, we can check if this remote program does help, you see? And then you can have this progress report even for an administrator or for a paymaster because at the end of the day, we are employed by the school or by the association. You want some progress report to give. And this remote app can help you to create those reports at a fraction of a maybe, cost. Yes. If you can, if you can chime in the last slide, you can go back. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, like, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. So all these apps that we share today, right? Like uh, really, uh, like I was mentioning the motivation athlete, especially in, uh, in remote training, right? It's really very important, right? So like, you know, some of the apps like the home court that has like integration of AI, AR, you know, gaming fine, right? Like um, training is very important to motivate the athlete, right? It's all our coaches know, right? To get the buy-in and give them their, and for them to give their best, right? Imagine if you're conducting a training online, right? Okay, without all these tools, right? It's really, really hard to really motivate them to, to give their best, right? So even a home court, right? It gives you like, you know, a score, right? It actually give you like a, a ladder, right? Or, or even like a, you know, a championship table that actually help them to, to really motivate the athlete to really execute their best for training, right? And furthermore, so like, you know, all these applications, right? Due to current climates, right? We're not able to have access to the field, 
right, or to access to a big group of athletes, right? Like how Ife mentioned earlier, right? Okay, all these apps, right? You can actually ask the athletes to submit in videos of their performance, be it a skill, be it a vertical jump, right? Then you can actually use all this, right, for you as a coach, right, to analyze the technique, to analyze the performance, and really, you know, give a great feedback to the to the athlete, even if it's you know your unable to see that in person or many miles away from them, right? So remote coaching is something that is a new norm for all of us, right? They really mm. need to embrace and something that's not going go go away, right? Yeah, so it's something that, you know, we need to really upskill ourselves and really wanted to really spend this time to really share all this information to you, right? And, you know, remote coaching is something that is easily uptaken for any coach, right? The apps are easily available, affordable, Right, so that's the the barrier entry is really not high. Mm. Yep, that's my sharing. Yeah, and and in summary, like we want to say, it's really uh, if you think that you want to know more about how each of these mobile applications right can help you specifically, like for example, uh, my jump tool. So how do I use this specifically? Because mm. there's a learning curve to it. Also, uh, it mm. takes some time for Julie and I to figure out how to use it because as much as it's simple there's still some learning that needs to be uh, taken place. And I do understand that some of us are sport coaches and we might not, be, uh, we might not major in sport science in our university days. So this, some of these apps, there's, there's a bit of a technical component to it. But uh, you can still, you can still uh, hit us up on our... So this... Maybe if you, yeah. Yeah. Take, take a so picture this, of this, this slide. Man, guys. Yeah, yeah, correct. Take a picture yeah. of these slides. Uh, very important, like, uh, you know, most of the applications are either really, very cheap or even free or on a freemium model, you know, like a lot of apps now are, are on this kind of model. So it's good to even test it out, play around, see whether it works well for you, for your sport, for your setting, for your coaching, right? And like, you know, definitely take one and implement uh, in your setting, in your coaching setting. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is our context. So you can uh, either email us or follow us on Instagram. And for specific questions, right, regarding each of this app, uh, do, do let us know what, what you need to know and like, oh, how do I use my jump tool? Like when Julian measure, right, barbell velocity, what is it? How, as a coach, how can I implement it? Because the implementation part uh, is quite lengthy. Today, what we really want to do is to give everyone an idea that, hey, remote coaching, right, could be done with the help of mobile application and good mobile uh, hardware, which everybody should, I think most of us will have access to it yeah so this is what we really want to introduce to everyone today and for the implementation part we welcome you guys to email us or to uh chat us up on instagram so we can actually share more with you and if not we will proceed to the q and a uh, session wait, wait, oh hold yes on. okay uh can you go go to the slide before that yes can yeah, okay. So thanks to Ife and uh, Julian for sharing. So uh, we have curated just a couple of questions for both of you. So mm. the first one is, uh, okay, I understand that there's this Q swim for swimming. Uh, so are there any other apps for swimming and triathlon that you know of? Any like cost-effective and yet useful apps? This was one of the questions that we picked up on the Coach Ashley Facebook. Mm. Maybe if you just want to share on your the, the run, you know, you were analyzing the running. Yeah, yeah correct. Let me uh, go back to it. So for swimming, right, uh, we have to go and let us go and find our resources unless uh, Julian has uh, something on mind already. For running, I would find that you use Runmatics, it's not bad, yeah. But most importantly, we need to understand how we can correct those forms. Because Runmatics, uh, you are able to break down the running form of the runner into very simple and understandable uh, diagrams that you can actually start correcting frame by frame. Uh, there's the toe off part, there's the power stance part. If you, if you do, if you are able to correct those forms, then I would recommend right Rammatics to be the best for you. Uh, if not, I would say I think you can just try it out. Yeah, you can uh check out. I would type in the group chat. Rammatics, right? You can pack. You can go and look at this LT's uh 
Yeah, uh, this running. Yep. Okay, once you get the rheumatics form, you can go and look at this Altis running and they will actually kill you. They will give you an idea, right? Kinogram. They will give you an idea on what is a good form to do. Okay, I've shared a link on the chat. Have a have a look at it. Yep. So mainly it's so, like uh, I guess this is all. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Carry on, please. Okay. So for the rheumatics, you can look at it uh, with a kinogram, and you can just take it out six frames, mm -hmm. then you compare with whatever is recommended on the kinogram methods for the LT's website. Yeah. Oh, yes, Julian. Yeah. So like uh, I think the swimming question was because I answered it within the the Zoom meeting, right? So you can actually use an app for swimming specifically called qswim.co right so if you google qswim.co right so, so it's an app to actually analyze like um, dry land drills right um, that you can do for for swimming right so it's like i haven't really explored the application really very well but it's highly recommended by a lot of uh, swimming coaches uh, like internationally right to just analyze swimming technique on land right? and so check that out Okay, uh, thanks Ife and Julian. So one last question would be, okay, I understand that quite a few apps has been presented in this workshop. So what are their range of pricing like? Are any of them free or they all of them come with a cost and like in what kind of range? Like per month or per download or um, what has uh, been your I'll experience? Answer, I'll answer that. So that, you know, that slide, maybe Ife can go to yep. the slide where I answer the question. Yeah, so most most of the apps, right, are either are really, really cheap, right? So it's like a USD ten ten dollars and and below, right? And like uh, some of the applications, right, are like most apps these days are based on a premium model, right? They give you like uh, you know basic functions, right? Then after you upgrade it to pay a little bit more, like just for one time fee to get a full uh, fledge of the functions of the of the applications, right? Yeah, so that's that's mainly the the cost of the app. So if you think of it, it's a really very low investment for very big returns. Huh? Okay, thanks Julian. Uh, we just have another question that pop up. Um, any apps for tennis, tennis techniques? If you play tennis? <laughs> I used to coach a uh, tennis player in their specific strength condition, but I don't coach them in their technique. Have you tried UberSense? Like how I use UberSense to uh, train my football players technique because basically I'm uh, certified as a football coach then I, I'm able to correct them and I'm able to make sure that they are executing it in the right form so probably the uber sense will be pretty good because you can if there's a certain angle right that you want your tennis player to be in when they serve or do a forehand then yeah you can do it but I would say mm, these are more for I think technical analysis would be more for mature players. And at a young, at a younger age, right? Like I would say 12 to 14, you really have to uh, give them a lot of, uh, you have to demonstrate to them visually. You have to show them and let them discover it on their own to try to, or even set constraints in the environment so that they can execute the right technique. When you give them a video analysis, right? For young athletes, they will not really understand. So for me, I will use UberSense for to to uh to tell them about technical correction yeah okay How thanks do you pronounce yeah. huh? hood yeah. technique uh? hood technique is it i i can't really get the hang of it <laughs> yeah thanks well okay uh thanks ife and julian so i'll be taking over the uh last part of the presentation mm. yeah 